Howdy peeps and welcome back to the channel. A little more serious subject today. Uh, today I want to talk about the nitrogen cycle. Cycling a tank. What does it mean? What is the basic science behind it all? Well, let's start off from the beginning. You've got your first tank. You've got some water in it. And now you want to know what to do. Well, there are well three methods that I know of for cycling a tank. Um, first being the fishless method, which involves putting either some piece of food in there, like a piece of shrimp or fish food, and letting it rot to create the ammonia. The second is the fish in cycle which is basically just the traditional way of doing it has been done that way for donkey's years and thirdly is what people are calling the silent cycle or I call it the plant cycle whereby you basically use plants to pull the ammonia and the stuff out of the water until it all cycles in now you know, there, everyone prefers different methods of doing it I prefer a kind of mixed method which involves having a planted tank starting out with a couple of smaller fish in there and squeezing the gunk out of an old filter or two into the tank. Now the filter gunk contains the bacteria, contains food for the bacteria most importantly as Norman comes down has a quick munch on a shrimp pellet um, and yeah, you know, it's it's the basic building blocks of the nitrogen cycle. And now I, I tend to find I don't have any issues at all that way. And I think every one of my tanks has been fish in cycled. Yep, it has. Um, even when I haven't intended to, it's been fish in cycled. Um, <laughs> things happen. Um, now I understand the thinking behind the fishless cycle and it does stop people from accidentally killing fish with ammonia poisoning or nitrite poisoning but it does seem to take a lot longer than a fish in cycle. Now again it's one of those things a fish in cycle. To, I mean, this is this part is all to my mind and my thinking. There's no. This is how I say to do it. Do it this way. This is. Um, lots of reading and watching and taking in different people's ways of doing things. Um, if you use a fish in cycle, you get the natural fish poop turning up, the natural waste detritus that the bacteria feed on and yeah as long as you keep an eye on the water and do your water tests as I said in my things to get when you're getting your first aquarium a water test kit is probably the second most important thing after the tank um, you know, it's a little bit of a moment you know 0 0.25, 0 0.5 is not going to do any long term harm uh, same with the nitrite. Nitrate, let it go, don't worry about it. Um, if you're running come water change, if you're between probably 40 and 60, nothing's going to have an issue. Um, I think, and don't quote me, but I think some scientists did some testing and found that nitrates only actually become properly toxic to fish at around 300 parts per million. Now <clears throat> with a planted tank obviously the plants take up some of the nitrates. All right, this tank it's a 15 litre or what's that? 4, 8, 12. Let's call it a 4 gallon. Uh, I always use the US gallon rather than the UK gallon. They're different sizes. Some people get a bit confused. Um, 
and as, you, as you've seen it's home to a better some nerite snails and a whole bunch of cherry shrimp that keep multiplying now as you can also see heavily planted lots of greenery and there's just one little sponge filter barely ticking over up that corner there and this thing runs at basically zero ammonia zero nitrite and around five to ten parts per million nitrate uh, you know it's I literally just changed the water to put some more um, calcium and minerals back in and get rid of because the wood is still leaching tannin so it does go a bit yellow over time anyway the actual nitrogen cycle is when you hear people talking about is your tank cycled I don't mean get on your push bike and take it round the block it's a basic bacterial uh, process now, there'll be many many different types of bacteria in a fish tank which is why it's always a good idea to wash your hands when you take when you've done things in the tank just in case but what we're talking about are the beneficial bacteria nitrifying or nitrifying let's just call them beneficial bacteria or BB as most people refer to them as what they do is the first lot turn the well, feed on ammonia so when a fish goes to the toilet or a shrimp or a snail or other life form it produces ammonia and that's toxic to fish as you can imagine when we go when we have a pee it's ammonia right so if you just kept drinking your own pee you get ill it's slightly different in fish but you know similar kind of outcome um, so the first lot of bacteria will turn the ammonia into nitrite which is also toxic to fish it's actually more toxic than ammonia now what happens then is another lot of bacteria come along and they start eating the nitrite and they produce nitrate now if you have a really deep sand bed or extenuating circumstances certain special filtering techniques you can get nitrifying bacteria which take out the nitrate as well but no, for the general home aquarium we don't think or worry about that part of the nitrogen cycle which is what it is the fish eat things that contain nit that are you know have nitrogen in them they produce ammonia it gets turned basically back into nitrogen um, and that's as far as the go when people say the cycle I mean is your tank turning the ammonia and the nitrite into nitrate quick enough that the first two don't measure on a test or if they do it's very very low so boom there you go you've done that you've set your tank up decorated it however you want plant it no plants rocks no plants whatever and you've got it to the point where that's happening the whichever method you've chosen the ammonia is disappearing instantly almost and becoming nitrate and that's when you do your water changes to keep the nitrate levels down and that's also when you can start putting fish in there or start adding fish if you've done a fishless or fish in cycle sorry now it's never a good idea to add a load of bio load or fish or shrimp or snail bio load being what it is it's a load on the tank never a good idea to add a lot at once because they will produce more ammonia than your bacteria can cope with and although the bacteria do reproduce very rapidly and soon pick up the slack you will have a period of time when you've got the ammonia in there or the nitrite in there might only be a day or two but it can be enough to cause harm especially with some more delicate species shrimp for example 
really don't like anything nasty in the water. Uh, betters, sorry, betters, not beta, not beta, better. Um, sorry, just winding up my some of my American friends. Um, and you know, they're fairly bomb proof, being anabantoids as well, so they breathe air, so a little bit of gill damage doesn't really hurt them too much. But obviously, you still want to avoid it if you can. Because they're your pets. Right? Same way you wouldn't keep your dog in the garage with the car engine running. Or in a hutch and not clean the hutch out. Now, why would you do that with a fish or a shrimp or a snail? As you can see the shrimp are going nuts in here again. Um, so that's the basic nitrogen cycle now does that mean your tank is matured no that means your tank is on the way to getting matured now by matured i'm, I'm not entirely sure the correct terminology here um, if if someone with the scientific knowledge of biology and chemistry good probably more biology at this point in the game um, would care to comment and put me right on anything it's what I call a bio cycle in a tank okay so we've got the bacterial cycle going and to me there's another level which is a bio cycle which is where everything in the tank comes into play from as I say the bacteria to other single celled organisms so I'm just going to have to oh, move myself because I'm sat on the floor it's rather uncomfortable um, so you start out with the bacteria doing their bit and you get your single celled organisms your two cells and multi cell you know, through to things that you might think hang on can I see something in what's that no, absolutely minute microscopic flora and fauna now and in the case of this tank at least, the shrimp live, well they're constantly grazing. They might be on the plants but they're not eating the plants, they're eating the microfauna, the tiny microscopic crustaceans and life forms and whatever they are that are living on the plants. And from there it's, you, know, you end up with the entire ecosystem. And that, I believe, is what we should be aiming for in a tank, is a complete ecosystem. As a shrimp tries to make off with an entire blood worm. Yeah, that's not going to work. Um, <laughs> yeah, when the shrimp tries to make off with a food source that's bigger than it is. So, there we go. Um, once I've done more research into the biology as it were and the chemistry of a biocycle or the ecosystem of a tank then I will do a video on that but, um, I said I'm more of a physicist than a biologist so yeah I I don't want to say something and it be completely wrong I think I pretty much got my head around the nitrogen cycle though that one's pretty simple so there we go. Uh, if I have said anything completely dumb and re retarded and idiotic, yeah, let me know and I can change it. Oh, oh, move again because my knees are locking up. Uh, getting old and this sitting on the floor is not good for me. Plus I've got a really big burp brewing. Oh, there you go. So where was I? Where was I? Yes, so if I've made any mistakes, let me know. I don't think I have, but, you know, as always, don't just collect all your research, all your knowledge from one source. No. You've watched my video. Hopefully you've got this far into it without falling asleep, switching off, or whatever. Then go watch, say, 
Jason, Primetime Aquatics, he's got a nitrogen cycle video. Corey's got one, I think most of the channels have got one. Or most of the, the big channels anyway. Um, now watch videos about cycling. If you're new to fish keeping, definitely watch and do plenty of research. It's a lot easier these days with YouTube. If you're in the right groups on Facebook, they can be really helpful as well. Places like Tank Talk, John at KG Tropicals. You've got Aquarium Group Support, run by the Aquarium Co-op. Trying to think. <laughs> uh, the King and Queen Cichlids Facebook group, Fish Tubers Notifications. There are loads. I mean, you'll know if you're in a good group or not just by reading a few posts. If it turns, if if someone's posted a picture of a ten-gallon tank with a baby goldfish in, and it turns into a flame war, just leave the group. You're not going to get anything worthwhile from it. So there we go. I've been rambling for 16 minutes. Hopefully, I've covered something that might be useful. And as I said, no, for beginners, but also for experienced fish keepers, you never know, you might pick up something new, something might trigger a thought in your head. That's how it goes. Anyway, thanks for watching for this long. Enjoy your fish keeping, whether you're experienced or a newbie. Have fun. Peace out. Rock on. Yes, I cut my nails. Bye-bye.